Hey guys, it's Debbie and I am wanting to just do a short podcast on the research I am doing about keto, carnivore, ancestral health diet, the proper human diet, carnivore, animal-based diet. Is it for you? How long should you do it if it's good for you? And what if you exercise? Endurance athletes, triathletes, ultra runners, cyclists, we often train more than once a day. So questions are often on doing a higher fat protein diet, which is low carb, nutrient timing, optimizing your performance with strategic carbohydrates, real food as some honey. So I've been diving into this. Also putting this together with what I've learned a lot last few years, running functional lab tests as a FDN practitioner, correlating that information with my nutritional therapy assessment that I do as a nutritional therapy practitioner. And then I look at people's workouts. My clients use training peaks often, and I analyze the data look at their nutrition, look at their chronometer, look at their macros, and then correlate that with their heart rate variability, their recovery, their repair, their heart rate. But really fascinating is looking at their gut health and looking at their nutrition. And then when we run a food zoomer, learning about what foods are reactive with them. So if you're watching the video YouTube channel, I pulled up some slides. Now this first one I'll go to is Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. She started getting me down the interest of, Hey, maybe we're doing too much keto and not focusing on protein. We're focusing on fat and we're not focusing on protein. So in 2019, I listened to Dr. Gabrielle Lyon at their nutritional therapy practitioner, which is our conference was right at the beginning of COVID before it kind of started in February, I remember leaving Portland, Oregon, going back to Seattle and everyone was starting to freak out that next week. So Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, as I talk about her all the time, I love her information, her resources, her social media posts, her podcasts, tons of great information we need. Muscle is the organ of longevity. The stronger and healthier your muscle is, the more carbohydrates and fat your body burns. Protein is responsible for nearly all the work that is carried out in every cell, and it also is needed for structure, function, and regulation of tissues and organs, especially muscle. High quality protein, spill it evenly at each meal three times a day is the goal to achieve muscle protein synthesis. So, since I started looking at this, thinking, hmm, if I'm supposed to do one gram of protein per ideal pound of body weight. And she was on my podcast. We talked about this back in 2019. How am I supposed to hit those macro goals? If I'm only eating once a day, maybe twice a day, I was doing a lot of fasting because when you eat fat and protein, you're full, you're not hungry, you lose cravings. That's one of the benefits of being fat adapted and being off the processed food and sugars. So since then, let's see, what year is it? 2023. So four years to five years, I've been trying to do this. Realizing that, are we fasting too much? Other article I'm looking up, research, Rob Wolf, are we fasting too much? If you're fasting for cell autophagy, listen to my podcast. I'm going to put together on fasting or exercise for cell autophagy. So looking at Dr. Gabrielle, you can look at her website, find Dr. Gabby lion protocol or lion protein diet PDF. So she talks about the power of protein, how to break it down into those three meals, which is opposite of what most of us have been doing, trying to hit 30 to 50 grams per meal spaced out three to four hours. Dr. Gabrielle just had an amazing podcast on her show with her mentor. And they were talking about how to protein to space your protein. 
So great information on here. She is not strict carnivore. She does focus on protein. You listen to your podcast. It's not that we need to be nutritional ketosis is hitting that protein goals. And then smart carbs. She used to talk about lunch and dinner of smart carbs, starchy carbs listed below. I think if you're doing more high intensity interval training, you might feel better in your performance doing a little bit more, uh, smart carbs. She calls it or starchy carbs. And then quality, quality is important. So ideally, if you can afford it, super expensive, I know grass fed beef, free range, organic poultry, wild caught fish, protein shakes are not ideal because of powder, but I'm finding they're great. If I don't want to eat a meal as evening and I need to get more protein, it's post-workout. I'm going to work out in the morning. I'm going to go to bed soon. I don't want a meal. I'm not going to eat a steak because I take forever to digest meat. So I can't eat before bed, but a shake is whey protein and sweetened and that adds some nut butter and it works for me. So apple cider vinegar she uses and main goal here is what everyone's saying. Avoid the processed foods, avoid the hydrogenated oils, the fried foods, refined sugars, sauces, alcohol doesn't really help you a lot. And of course, gluten, wheat. So This is a great guideline sheet that she talks about each meal, about four to six ounces of protein, general rule, daily macronutrient ratio based on Dr. Gabrielle's suggestions. I don't know if this has changed since she wrote this 40, 30, 30, 40% carbs, starch carbs in the small amounts, 30% protein, minimum 30 grams, three times a day and up to 30% fat tweak as needed. So this is kind of the 40, 30, 30 rule in her ratios and for men versus women and making sure my athletes don't eat enough. We tend to do too much fasting and not eat as much and you got to eat more of that protein. I can eat, I just had a 16 ounce steak the other day. (laughs) I can eat, plus I'm taller and I'm more muscular. I can handle a lot of protein. But that's what makes me feel full. That's what makes me curious to do this more animal-based diet, high fat protein together and eat carbs when I feel like it, (laughs) but really prioritizing my protein, healthy fats leads me to being satiated and full and not hungry. But if I just have vegetables, I'm full, I'm full, I'm not full. And if I just have fat, I feel like I'm missing something. So for my body, I'm type O blood type, if that means anything, but I do best on protein. So eggs, poultry, ruminants are beef, buffalo, lamb, elk, venison, and stuff, animals like that. They have legs, other meats, wild boar, ostrich, wild hunted is best. Fish, seafood, shellfish, wild caught, and sustained sustainability finished is best. And then pork, 100% pastured, organic is best. And then she talks about all the fats that are good. So monounsaturated fats are avocado, avocado oil, cold pressed, hazelnuts, macadamia nuts, butters, nut butters, olives, extra virgin olive oil, cold pressed. The best saturated fats are animal fats. Like we cook bacon and save the oil and keep in a dish. Clarified butter, ghee, coconut oil, MCT oil, coconut butter, coconut flakes and sweetened and coconut milk and sweetened. So you can find some occasional um, almond nut butter, Brazil nuts, pecans, pistachios in her plan. Nuts are best soaked and sprouted. You want to look out for low FODMAP. And that's what I think is important to look at. Okay. What vegetables are good? Because then we go over to more of the keto carnivore carnivore that all plants are bad. It's more looking at, okay, what are oxalates? What are lectins? What are phytates? What are FODMAPs? There's not a lot left. So that's why I always come to the conclusion that when people are doing a gut healing protocol, it makes sense that carnivore for 30 days might be a good reset for them, a good place to start. But then we just have to adjust with their nutrition and maybe see how they feel and maybe add in some berries and some in-season fruit if necessary. I mean, me vegetables as Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli work for you. So this is all on Dr. Gabrielle Lyons website, and you can get this for free. 
the carbohydrate starches, I look for more in season. And then if you're not exercising, you might just focus on protein and fat. If you're exercising more high intensity zone five, you may want to add some things. I stay away from rice, quinoa, oats, buckwheat, beans. I stay away from hummus. I don't really want, so maybe I don't like it. Body doesn't want it. And then fruit, I don't do too much of, of but in season fruit, I don't do as much because I get headaches from it. Why? I'm more fructose sensitive and I have to just match some berries with some like heavy cream. So that's why I just wanted to share with a Dr. Gabrielle Lyons website, nightshades. You have to look out for gluten-free grains. I have to stay away from wheat. So if you're going to do them sprouted and then low FODMAP, remember to look at. So that's a great option, you know, looking at how much protein is in these sources and serving sizes. So you can see how much a four ounce serving has say about 30 grams of protein. So if you're trying to get a little more, maybe go for six ounce serving of most meats when they're cooked. So that's some great information. So then I've been on a uh, low carb cruise with Dr. Ken Berry and Nisha and really diving into their YouTube channel, which they have a few million followers are pretty huge, but looking at what is a proper human diet. So I'm trying to get Ken back on my show. It's a little busy, but I thought I'd show you what's on his website. You can draw up PDF, download it, print it out, proper human diet cook cookbook. So this is a great guide. You can see on the YouTube channel, proper human diet. And I will look at, let me share his video on the BBB and E challenge. That's 30 days to 90 days, which is eat all the bacon, beef, butter, eggs. And then he added the fatty fish as the anchovies, sardines that you want to eat to feel fullness, comfortably full and a six hour eating window if you're metabolically damaged. So that's fasting a little longer than we would. We athletes might need to fast 12 to 15 hours more than that, probably not hitting enough calorie and protein fat goals. Okay. So meat and seafoods, you can see on the list, I'm not going to eat most of those. <laughs> so you can see this list alligator. Nope. Goat. Nope. Kangaroo. Nope. Mussels, pheasant, rabbit, salmon, shrimp. Yes. Turkey. Okay. Squirrel. No. So anyways, this is the list. Rattlesnake. <laughs> Come on. He lives out in Nashville. He's the country boy. So let's look at steak. That's what I go for. Uh, beware of breaded meats, of course, cured meats with honey and sugars on the cured meat. Go for the lowest carb counts, glazes, sauces, usually mean sugar, usually have wheat, processed meats, usually have starchy carb fillers. So look at the ingredients. They shouldn't have anything. It's meat. So that is on here, the proper human diet. What are vegetables? Now this is where Dr. Ken, he works with a lot of people that have a lot of metabolic issues. Okay. If you are uh, healthy and you're an athlete, not having a lot of metabolic diseases, you can probably tolerate a little more higher in carbohydrates and feel good, feel energetic and feel your performance. Now that doesn't mean crappy carbs. It just means some acceptable vegetables as some celery, as some raw radish, some Brussels sprouts, beet greens, you know, cauliflower, look at what's in season. So that is okay. It's not all carbs are evil. It depends if you have gut issues. So a lot of people that need to do strict carnivore their gut is getting more inflamed from certain vegetables. So the vegetables that are too starchy that he suggests being avoided, trying to lose fat weight are listed here. Now these might be okay for you athletes, though I'm not a big fan of beans, but looking at sweet potato, a turnip, beets, carrots, potato, those might be okay for your higher exercise days. It depends. And then dairy is dairy. Okay. A lot of people cannot tolerate cow dairy. So often when I do their food sensitivity tests, we have to get off any cow dairy that's pasteurized, start to switch to raw 
and then choose no dairy at all or experiment with sheep, cheese, buffalo, broad is pretty good cheese, creamy. And I know I need to probably take out heavy whipping cream, heavy cream for a little bit, see if that's a problem. But there's some full fat dairy products. If you can tolerate dairy, see how you feel. So you can check out that list, full fat, non-fat, low fat means more sugar. So watch out for the, the products that say low fat, 2%, 1%, half and half. Those are not ideal. So heavy cream is better than half and half. And then fats and oils, Dr. Ken Berry has a list of oils, as did Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, avocado oil, coconut oil, layer, layered, lard, mayonnaise, looking at all these different ones that you can make mayonnaise without the crappy stuff. So look at these great sources, bison, tallow, beef, tallow, duck fat, cocoa, butter, goat fat, sheep, tallow, olive oil. So there's lots of options. Now, what can you drink on Dr. Ken Berry's proper human diet? Unsweetened tea, vodka, spiraling, that <laughs> vodka, gin, you know, watch your alcohol, ideally take it out for 30 days to 90 days and then add it in. But if you're trying to get healthy, alcohol doesn't help. Seltzer water, club soda, bone broth. I've been trying to do more of coffee, dry wines. Not necessarily. If you're trying to lose weight and get healthy, take out the wine, herbal tea, coconut milk. So that is lists on here. Dr. Ken Berry, proper human diet. So check out all this, the berries in season. Again, not good for people with metabolic issues, but once you are healthier and you're exercising, you can tolerate probably some in-season berries, right? And watch fruits. You know, some of these really can throw your blood sugar super high. So testing and not guessing with NutriSense for 30 days to 90 days is really beneficial and test all these foods on you and then combine them with fats, protein to slow down that insulin and see if your blood sugar is more stable. Nuts and seeds. If you have gut issues, a lot of people can't do these. Nut butters are better. Properly prepared, soaked, sprouted nuts are better. So those are all on lists. Now, sweeteners. I'm not a fan of stevia, xylitol, monk fruit, erythritol, swerve, allulose. Yes, maybe they don't activate your blood sugar and elevate insulin, but I think they're causing people to crave more sweetness. So taking out the sweeteners, I would suggest trying to do, if you're kind of stuck and breaking this addiction to sugar, get rid of these sweeteners and then spice things up instead. Add some apple cider vinegar and sparkling water, some lemon, lime. So check out Dr. Ken Berry's information. He's got tons of free information. And then we've got what Brad did, my friend Brad Kearns. He created this nutrient dense food. So when I started looking into functional lab testing with my clients, looking at their food sensitivity tests, when I'm healing them, it's looking at what foods are the most nutrient dense. So Brad created a list, grass fed lever, oysters, salmon, roe, caviar, and fruit, animal organs, liver, plus bone broth. See, I'm not going to eat any of this. No way. <laughs> Heart, kidney, sweet bed, Rocky mountain oysters, tripe. Sorry. Uh, I'll go for the far right option, organ capsules, ancestral supplements or primal kitchen has great ones. And you can save with our code, low carb athlete at primal kitchen and ancestral supplements might have a code for it too. And then red meat is a centerpiece of nutritious human diet throughout evolution, the butcher box, local grass fed. You can get, um, uh, primal, primal, um, paleo Valley is what I'm thinking. Paleo Valley has a great meat delivery service. And looking at other ones too, but eggs, get them local. The egg yolk, it has so much nutrition in it, the fat, the choline, B vitamins, lots of good stuff in there. So don't do egg whites, do the egg yolk. If you need egg whites from a protein, do that. And then wild caught fish, as I talked about, Dr. Ken Berry has a BBB and E, and then he's adding in these essential fatty acids we need through the smash family, sardines, mackerel, anchovies, salmon, and herring. So those are great fats. You can add in. So eating as much as you need to, to feel full and satiated in your eating window for athletes, if that's 12 hours, you might go to eight hour eating window. 
but making sure you're getting your protein goals, going back to Gabrielle Lyons post and information, on her website and podcast, spreading out those three meals, getting the 30 to 50 grams of protein in eating this nutrient dense food, focusing on your protein first is your animal based diet, nutrient dense foods. So you can look at that. That's from bradkearns.com M O F O for his supplements, but looking at this great chart he has on easy to digest plant foods, choosing the lower toxin plant foods, monitor for sensitivity. As I said, a lot of people, I test lectins and oxalates, phytates, the FODMAPs, they have to eliminate all these things. So what can you eat? Focus on more nutrient dense, whole foods, animal-based diet can help you. So that's on Brad's website. And then I pulled up um, another information, proper human diet, phd.com. And then looking at PubMed articles, I'll dive into in another podcast on, is this good to do a keto carnivore animal based diet for performance, for fat loss, for longevity? Well, yes, it's ancestral based. I think if you know that you as an athlete may need to look at timing your nutrition and matching your fueling with your training. So if you're doing zone two training, you're burning mostly fat. You don't need to add in some carbs quickly. You are doing more hit training, more zone four, five intervals. You need the energy quickly. So that's when adding some Vespa as honey, having some, um, easy to digest quick fuel. And that's kind of with S fuels talking about train low race high, or, you know, fueling for the right time. So the right intensity is where you want that quick energy, because if you listen to Dr. Dan blues on another article, I was just reading S fuels, um, Dan blues on go longer. He had a lot of great information on Zach bitters podcast. And Zach and I are going to do a podcast this fall on the nutrient timing. So great information on this episode Zach had with Dr. Dan Plews. And then also um, Dan Plews had a great blog on the right fuel, right time. And I think that's something you might enjoy reading right time on how to use that carbs. Are they necessary? Because everyone else is saying, no, they're not necessary. But if you read this article by Dan Plews, talks about using the right fuel and how you might need that quick fuel for doing a speed workout or tempo session that you're not going to have time to wait for gluconeogenesis because you want it now. So this is a great article to check out on ngriq.com, right fuel, right time, carb manipulation, make every session count. So I was just sending this to some clients, how to implement carbohydrate periodization according to your training. So just to summarize each session type as endurance, lower tempo, upper tempo, threshold, VO2 max, anaerobic capacity, as I do metabolic testing with Pinoe on athletes now. I really am interested in this because I'm helping people figure out their nutrition based on their training schedule. So if you look at this restrict carb intake around and during lower intensity activity with low glycolytic demand, so zone one and two, and then he says, don't be afraid to ingest carbohydrates during very long duration over an hour and a half to two hours. So targeting and improving fat oxidation as this will extend the duration of those sessions. So adding in a little bit, something like I was riding three hours on the weekend and we did four hours. I don't know. We did about hundred mile total on Saturday and Sunday and having a Laird's superfood bar has functional mushrooms in it. And it has 10 grams of protein and fat. And I think it was 19 grams of carbs. So I just had one of those in my entire ride. So really looking at your intensity duration and timing when to add in something. So fueling for more intense sessions, the few extra carbohydrates to support training quality, maximize stimulus for adaptation, and then ensure 
adequate overall calories are always ingested, even perhaps on days when you're having a low carb intake. So something to think about, and I shared this already, but this was just a great chart on a your IQ. So what I'm trying to teach you is N equals one. It depends. Should you do a strict carnivore? Maybe it works for you. But if you are doing it for healing your gut, which a lot of my clients need, we need to just adjust your workouts so we don't struggle with performance. If you're trying to race or hit tempo workout, speed workout, power threshold. So endurance versus Ironman specific training, lower tempo versus upper tempo, 70.3 specific training threshold, VO2 max anaerobic capacity. There's great examples on here as your fat oxidation will change. So that was good to tie in. What's all this carnivore stuff about if you are doing endurance training and racing, if you're training at higher heart rates, is carnivore enough fuel for you? So it's such a big thing. There's drkilts.com, keto carnivore, talking about what is carnivore. It's 70% or more from fat calories, 20 to 30% of your calories from protein, and then up to 10% of your calories from carbohydrates. A standard keto diet is generally high in animal meats and fats and low in plant foods, though it allows some low carb fruits and veggies. This is because animal products are naturally low in carbs while providing abundance of healthy protein and fats. Fruits and veggies, on the other hand, are generally low in fat and high in carbs. The carnivore keto diet takes the standard keto macronutrient fat, protein, and carbs ratios, but applies them to carnivore diet, calling this only for animal products while eliminating all plant foods. So that's the difference of keto to keto carnivore. Keto carnivore eliminates all plant foods. And so the research is, okay, isn't this what our ancestors did? And looking at the history, looking at research done, as we talked to Amber, well, Amber spoke on the low carb cruise, keto carnivore is the way our caveman ancestors ate and evolved for nearly 2 million years. So looking at key points on Dr. Kilt's website, you can check this out, that humans are keto carnivores by nature. Numerous lines of research shows that human existence of our ancestors focused on hunting giant fatty animals 10,000 years ago. Humans were responsible for eating these giant fatty animals. Blah, blah, I won't read it all, but you can read that. Now, there's great information. You can go into this blog on keto carnivore, Dr. Kilts.com, but benefits. Why are every, why is everyone doing this? <laughs> What's the big deal that we went from keto? Now we're to carnivore. We went, we started with paleo and then we went to keto and then primal health, ancestral health, carnivore, keto carnivore. Where are we? I think we're at carnivore now. So the research shows Keto diet improves blood lipid levels, improves insulin sensitivity, reductions in type 2 diabetes and fatty liver disease, reverses metabolic syndrome, reduces and reverses PCOS, treatment for numerous types of cancer, reduces and slows progression of neurological disorders as epilepsy, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, promotes weight loss, or I'd rather say fat loss more satiating meals and reduce cravings for processed and high carb foods, regulates inflammation, supports healthy immune response, high fat foods, enable your body to absorb fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, protects the glycolyx, a thin membrane around the surface of every cell responsible for overall health and easily damaged by sugar and carb intake. So what are the benefits of carnivore diet? Meat heals. You hear everyone say meat heals. Well, I'm not a big bean eater. So that's why it's taken me a while to go, okay, I know this works, but I just can't be hundred percent eating meat. No carb cravings, steady energy, improved cognition, improved mood, improved markers of heart health, fertility issues, better recovery after exercise, clear skin, better digestion, reduce inflammation and more. So check that out. 
93% improved or resolved obesity excess weight, 93% improved hypertension, 98% improved conditions related to diabetes, 97% improved GI symptoms is why I'm putting a lot of clients on a carnivore-ish diet and then improved psychiatric symptoms. So, so much information in here. So check that out. They had a great chart here on the carnivore food pyramid, salt, organ meats, high fat dairy, animal fats, eggs, non-ruminant meat, fatty ruminant meat. And then what I thought was interesting is the nutrient density in foods. And it's pretty amazing. That's why I've started eating meat a few years ago realize, okay, a ribeye steak has a lot of protein in it. I don't like chicken wings because you're eating on wings, but how to add those healthy fats. So you can check out the blogs. I think interesting information on there, but I'll finish up today looking at the another nutrition with Judy carnivore cure. So she has a great presentation. Judy just ran an online course and sent this out, Nutrition with Judy. She is also a nutritional therapy practitioner, but just great slides that you can download here. The importance of serotonin, mental health, gut health, serotonin, 95% is made in the gut. How many people have gut disease? That's what I'm helping people running functional labs. How many people have that have gut issues have an unhappy brain? I have clients all the time that are coming to me, not feeling their best. They're feeling sad, depressed, anxious. That's why we work in the gut first and what you're eating, when you're eating, how you're eating. Leaky gut syndrome, what triggers intestinal damage? What causes that intestinal damage? So knowing what foods can be friend or foe, every bite critical for nutrient density, plant toxins, lectins, and gluten can cause gut damage and inflammation. And then the other plant toxins, are they good or bad for us? So I used to only eat vegetables and some proteins. This is what's just interesting to look at this research. So look at Judy, Nutrition with Judy has really good YouTube videos, lots of great information, high carb foods, insulin, cortisol, really important to look at. Endocrine system. I'm talking to Elizabeth Bright again next week, and I'm taking sessions to ask her anything on hormones, cortisol, stress hormones. How does it work? How does it work by just changing to a animal-based diet? The chronic stress response. Check that out. Hormones. Look at cortisol. I talk about all the time. Extra burden on cortisol from blood sugar imbalances, life stress, maybe not eating enough foods to get the cholesterol. Your cholesterol is not bad. Cholesterol makes your hormones. So cholesterol is needed for cortisol hormones. Fat is your friend. So Dr. Elizabeth Bright was talking about this on the show. Really important to get those healthy fats. The brain, 60% fat. So really fascinating information. Thanks for Nutrition with Judy on cholesterol, on the false information we're given. It's just ridiculous. Canola oil. They have it at Whole Foods on the food bar. So check out this information. You can find it on Nutrition with Judy, Holistic Health Wellness. She puts out, again, as I said, tons of good content. So I just want to share you all these resources. So look at meat with vitamin C. As Dr. Ken Berry says, you don't need to take all the supplements if you get your food, nutrient-dense whole foods, and have proper digestion. Though a lot of clients have H. pylori that's really elevated, so we need to take some extra vitamin or uh, extra digest enzymes and do H. pylori protocol as Matula T. So just wanted to share that. You might be interested in checking out some of this if you like to geek out and really look at her information. So that's all for today. Just want to dive into some of the articles that I have all over my web browser here and share that with you. So let me know if you have questions for Elizabeth Bright, and I'll try to get Judy on here and talk about, okay, this is amazing, but what about athletes? Should we have zero carb? Should we add in some berries, some fruit, um, fruit, berries, same thing, add in some honey, potatoes, sweet potatoes. What's okay. Okay. So look at all this information, check it out and you can find all this online. All right. Thanks guys. 
Hopefully that helps you and we'll talk to you soon.